The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Clean Nation. Mike Campion here with... I know you're going to get frustrated because we've had like nine Tofiks on like over the last week. So another Tofik Zyme. Uh, <laughs> just busted chops because I'm so excited. I think I said it right. Tofik Zyme. You did. Um, you did. So for those of you on the podcast, you're missing. If you're expecting an accent and kind of a you know just a regular Cleveland looking white dude, it's, it's very Not very big of a, yep. a letdown. It says he's Middle <laughs> Eastern, but I don't believe him at all. He's got the name, but none of the looks, none of the accents. Just looks <laughs> the boring. American flag doesn't really help. He's got the either. American flag. He's he's doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that by the way because my wife's a big shooter, and when I see that American flag logo, I'm like, this person's probably into guns, and it's always embarrassing because they. They look at me and go, oh, you're really into guns? I'm like, no, my wife's like super into guns. So I'm like, yeah, that's not usually how that yeah. goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's a whole thing. Well, Toby's like, hey, if I could be Middle Eastern and look like a white guy, you could be a dude into guns. We're not exactly. having guns here. Everyone, everyone's welcome. <laughs> um, so anyway, super excited to have to introduce you to bring you uh, my new friend, Tofi. He started on the spot cleaners November 2020. We we're recording February 2022. So we've got coming up on a year, year and a half. He's in Toledo. Um, any background stuff you want to share before we kind of dive into the coaching, my friend? Um. You know, not really, except for, um, yeah, yeah, no, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. That's perfect. That's a great intro. Yes, that's good. Okay. Cool. Good at that. I was just, <laughs> honestly, I would have been happy just getting the name right. A good, a whole intro that's good as sure. a bonus. I was just like sure. kind of upset about the name. Um, <laughs> all right. So Toby kept trying to ask this question, or I kept asking him the question before just to make sure we're on the same page, but he's like, he kept trying to tell me background. I'm like, no, 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 we got to share with the audience. So. I'll just tell you, uh, Clean Nation, I got nothing, no idea. This is, so whatever he says, hopefully there's no cursing involved. We're just going to keep it light. We're going to roll. So uh, what's going <laughs> on in your world and how can I help, my friend? So, so yeah, um, you know, r- right now I'm at the point where I have some employees. I have three people that are working underneath me, taking care of all of our jobs at the moment. Um, just to give you a little background on how we even, uh, like, who do we service? What do we do? Um, we service strictly multifamily properties, so apartment complexes, and then their office spaces. Those are the only two types of cleanings that we offer. Um, and I used to manage some of the multifamily properties in Toledo, Ohio. Um, in doing that, after the, the three years of being in the business, I realized that the cleaning vendor of all the vendors that come in are literally like the worst. Um, inconsistency. Uh, the quality was, you know, also inconsistent. Them showing up was uh, inconsistent. So I, I, I saw a huge opportunity and I, and I jumped. I left my nine to five, you know, 60K a year job and uh, started this thing. Um, so really, really quick, because you said two things that I think people may not, may just take for granted and I want them to hear it. So you're doing two things right off the bat well that I want people to get. Did you hear the specificity of exactly who he serves? We only serve this. And um, didn't ask him his age, but for those of you not on the podcast, looks like a young man. Guess it's not even 30 yet. So 26. 26. So we got a younger fellow on here. Um, a lot of times young guys just, they can't wrap their minds around the niche, right? Like, oh my gosh, if I don't do this, I'm, I'm cutting off a lot of market, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, how many clients do you have? 12? Okay. So what's your niche? A thousand. Okay, you're twelve one thousandths in. Once you get to a couple hundred, let's worry about doing a bigger niche. So right off the bat, I love that you're like, I know who we serve. I'm better at the world, and at least that everyone in Toledo at <laughs> this exact niche. Boom, yep. that's big. Second thing, which is another thing people miss. Um, I kind of got the uh, yeah, I was a property manager, so I'm familiar with that. So I serve property managers. That's typically how people go, and there's nothing special about that. I'm a mom, and my house is dirty, so I clean for other moms. Yeah, I'm with this, and I'm comfortable with that. So there's there's nothing special about that. There is something special about he said the magic words. When I was doing that, of all the vendors that we served, one was the biggest pain in the butt. One made me crazy. One was all the pain wrapped up, and I went where the pain is. 
Yes. People freaking miss that. People go, what's the best, what's the best niche? The niche that has the most pain that you can solve. Always, 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 always. I'll take pain over money. I'll take pain over people mm-hmm. I like. I'll take pain over just about anything as long as I don't have to lie, cheat, or steal. So for those of you guys listening, pay attention to our young friend here. Pick a niche, pick a niche with pain. If you do that, you're already 80% of having coached thousands of people. That's a big freaking deal. All right. Sorry. When you say smart things, I can't let it pass. No, no, no. People here. Go ahead. I'll, I'll soak that in so that when you're, when you're going, yeah, out, when I come you know, and hammer I'll, you, I'll you're remember. like, okay, he was yeah, nice yeah. a minute ago. What yeah. happened? <laughs> um, so yeah, so you hit the nail on the head. Um, the pain was where I, I, not only me, but you know, within the organization, I just knew everyone had that issue. So I uh, jumped ship kind of tried to frame up um, an idea of how to operate to where we are um, taking care of that pain every single time. And really what it came down to was the, um, I'm giving a little bit of my juice here, but it's the, the, the reviews that we, the, the review process that we go through with our homes that we clean. Um, so when they're inside of them, we have a, a two-part system where they're sending, they're taking photos of the unit before it's cleaned, and then they're sending me photos after. Um, I then have a report for the client where they're able to tap in at the end so of the day. Really, really quick, all yeah. fascinating, but I want to make sure we get you the coaching you need. So get me, hit me with yeah. a question so we can get you where yes. you need to go. So, so yes. Yeah, so sorry, I was I was getting sidetracked, but uh, basically, happens to the best of us, my friend. No judgment. <laughs> Just want to make sure we stay on track and get you. Done. No, thank you, thank you. Um, so essentially this is where we are. We, I was cleaning all of the homes. I'm able to, um, I have three different people cleaning right now. We op- operate on subcontracting. So I subcontract all the work. Um, and it's important that I tell you this because this is a part of the question because so let, me, I'm, let me do this. Cause I've coached a yeah. lot and I trust the process, baby. I promise. So just ask the question with no background as opposed to you tell me what you think I need. Ask the question with no background. And I promise you, I'll ask you everything I need. Promise. promise. Okay. Double okay. promise. Pinky. Swear. That's fair. All right, That's just fair. Give me the question. No background. What, at what point, at what point do I need to consider W2 a, the, how am employee? I supposed to answer that without any background? No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> Sorry. I just had a- <laughs> when you started that, that, that I was like, Oh shoot. What is he about? Come on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. That's a fine question. And we've answered it on other podcasts. So I'm going to answer it quick and then dive okay. kind of to the, to what you probably really want. Um, okay. I don't want to take too little time and I certainly don't want to take too much. So believe it or not, W2 versus 1099 is rarely, there's a lot of things in business that are important, but aren't, or they're more box checked. They're not going to make you grow. A lot of people go, oh, I didn't get started. I'm finally really started. I have my W, my uh, LLC. I'm finally really started. I got some sort of license from the city. I'm finally really started. I got, and they, they go off on a bunch of crap that they have nothing to do about nothing, right? So workers' compensation insurance, liability insurance, having an LLC, having legal standing with the state, all important things. I'm not saying having, uh, in my opinion, W-2 employees versus 1099, all important stuff, right? I'm not saying don't buy insurance, be illegal. I'm not saying any of that crazy stuff. None of it's going to make you a nickel. These are all boring crap that you got to check to pay your taxes, right? Are you going to get rich paying taxes? No, but it's your duties as American. And if you don't want to go to jail, it's probably a good idea, right? So, yeah. Yeah. but we're not, we don't talk a lot about it. here's how to pay taxes because that's A, it's an accountant thing and do whatever. So yeah, 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 yeah. this thing's the same, right? W-2 versus 1099. So it's bigger than paying taxes. Let me answer the question, but I just yeah, I don't yeah. want you to be fooled. Like what I don't want anyone to hear is, oh my gosh, that's going to make me rich is, is going to W2. Um, it won't. Here's the thing. Most cleaners in most cities and states, and you got to talk to a local, local labor lawyer, have W2 employees, period. They call them 1099 contractors. They treat them as such, but that does not mean they are. Um, you're like, well, how do I know, Mike? Well, if we lived in a, in a better country, sorry, America, I love you. Um, or sorry, I shouldn't say better country. If we lived in a country with some better, better laws, there yeah. would be clear. If I kill Tofiki in the street for no reason, that's illegal. I should have consequences. There's no question. It's not like that with W2 versus 1099. They have a lot of guidelines which change. Like, do you control their time? Do you provide their supplies? How much training do you do? Right. And at the end of the day, believe it or not, I can have an opinion. You can have an opinion. Your labor lawyer can have an opinion. Sadly, at the end of the day, the the one person who's going to decide is a low-level bureaucrat with the government who's going to come in and audit you and unilaterally decide you are contractors. 
or you are W2 employees and mm-hmm. I'm going to level your company with fines and that'll be the end of that um, or not. And you can make your argument, but at the end of the day, even so, a good labor lawyer is going to tell you, I'm pretty confident in this, but you know, as well as I do, you can get audited in some crazy bureaucrat go, nah, I feel different. It's a Tuesday. And yeah. that shall be that. So all that to say, for me, I always tell people to go W-2. It's not a timing thing. It's that's what I would do. It's timing would be today. So it doesn't matter how your situation is. That's what I do. A, because I don't want to get, same reason I have liability insurance, right? I'm mm-hmm. 25 years. I've been buying liability insurance. I probably got a half a million dollars in it. Never made a claim yet. But if and when something goes wrong, it's not going to take me down. Same with W-2 versus 1099. Is it going to cost you more? Yeah. Might there be very little benefit right off the bat? Maybe. Um, but you probably already have W two employees. Last thing is, you don't want to compete with someone that's got that, like, someone that knows what they're doing. If I came into your market, you had W, you had ten ninety nines. I would take all your clients. It'd be so easy. I just go, yeah. Um, if you don't need workers' compensation insurance, you just have illegal people in here, and if they get hurt, of course they're going to sue you, and they're going to sue him. And if that's okay with you to save a nickel, God bless. And they're going to wait. What? I can get sued? It's not legal. Hold on. They don't have because you know as well as I do. The deal is, if they're ten ninety nine, they got to get their own workers' compensation insurance. Not Tofik, of course, because he's different, but every other cleaner I've ever talked to and said, show me proof of your workers' comp insurance for your people because they're paying it themselves, right? Mm-hmm. 100% goes, yeah. obviously, none of them have it. So it's like, okay, aside from the legal issues, which is going to allow me to take all your clients, aside from the fact that if and when you get audited, you're probably going to get stuck. On top of that, what if somebody driving to the, the thing gets hurt or falls off a ladder or something happens, they get hurt? Just from a moral issue, I don't want that in my head. I have 25 yeah. years in business, 100 employees. I think I've had two workers' comp claims. Thank God it was all handled. I could just yeah. be in the hospital loving on my, my, my team and not worrying about it. So short answer is it's not going to make any extra money, but now would be the time. Um, did that? I'd like to talk about something deeper and more helpful, but is there anything on that we need? Any loose ends we well, need to first? No, all of that makes a lot of sense. And a lot of what you talk about in your podcast, <clears throat> you do mention a lot of the legality differences and what, you know, where you might end up depending on the scenario. Um, So I know I really appreciate that. I, I do, I wonder, I guess I was always under the impression that if I had contract workers at some point, I don't know if it's a rep from as far as revenue or just production in general, where it make, it only makes sense to W2 everyone in that sense. No, Um, we we can spend a bunch of time talking, but nope, it has nothing to do with that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, okay. That would be like if you get audited to go, well, I figured if I broke the law with one guy, it's no big deal. But where is it? Is it seven where you get pissed? The sure. do, you're illegal. Sure. Like, there's, what do you mean? <laughs> like, I paid most of my taxes. I didn't know you want it all. Like, no IRS says, oh, well, most of it's fine. As long yeah. as you didn't yeah. screw yeah. for more than 20 years. Like, there's no magic number. Either yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. wrong. Start it from the beginning. And again, please don't hear me judging. Just, I'm here to help you. Right? Yeah, no. I, I do. I'm coming from more of a place of not as far as taxes go, but as, as a team more as a mental strategy for our, for our team moving forward. It has, has nothing to do with it. We have, it shouldn't, right? On our, well, team, on our team, just to let you yeah. know, we have some w, we have some contractors because they are, and we have some, and again, we don't have any cleaners. If I had cleaners, they would be contractors. And we have sure. some employees. I treat them exactly. Right. Let, let's move on. I don't want to beat that horse to So what's the big thing holding you back from the next level? I promise you it's not your 1099, you should be W2. What's, yeah. what's really holding you back? Let's talk about that. Um, well, the thing that you always talk about, which is holding me back right now, which is the, the not having enough clients. Okay. Now I have enough clients. I don't have enough cleaners going back and forth. I I don't really have a a problem with the growth. I'm still in that spot. Like I still, we're still capturing a client every couple of months and then getting another cleaner on top. But, um, automate, uh, making this business automatic is kind of where my head's at. Um, and I guess, you know, the one thing that I try to think of is, well, when I'm not in the business, this is, and I'm really far from this point, but when I'm not in the business, how is it going to run by itself? And that starts, so hold you on, know, hold on. You, you make it a, a very common mistake. We uh-huh. don't want to really think about the big thing because it's hard. So we make a bunch of other garbage. that doesn't have nothing to do with nothing. So the W2 versus 1099, to me, that's a red hair. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I do think you should switch to W2 sooner or later, but that's not magically going to fix everything. Um, right. And I want to say what you said, because I've talked to enough cleaners and please don't hear me picking on you, but hear me. This is perfect because this is what you said is so common and other people yeah. are doing the same thing. And I want to put a spotlight on it so they don't do it. You said what you wanted, but you're afraid to say it. So you backtracked. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, I'd like to grow. I don't have a, you know, I, if I, if I'm afraid, I don't know how to get customers. I can't get employees. If I don't have employees, I can't get customers. So I'm not growing like I want period hard stop. That's the truth comma, but we still get a customer now and again. It's not that big a deal. And now let me make up this other, cause I don't really want to deal with that. Let me talk about a bunch of other garbage. It doesn't matter. Cause if we deal with that, you're going to ask me to do hard things. Mike and I want to do hard things. So here's the good news. I'm not, I don't get a vote. I'm not, I don't have nothing in your business, right? I can just give you coaching and you get to go. F it. If that's what I got to do, Mike, forget it. I'll stay where I'm at. I'll keep my growth. God bless you. You can do whatever you want. That's fine. Um, but what I don't want you to do is make up a bunch of non-problems as problems mm-hmm. to dodge the real conversation you need to have with yourself. So the real yeah. conversation is where do I want to go? And yeah. don't pad it. A lot of people do that. Well, I'm still cleaning, but I like cleaning while I'm growing. And, and in my heart, I know this isn't what I feel God put me on the earth to do. And I'm not living my best life, but yeah. that hurts too much to talk about. So, well, I'm still growing. I'm still, so don't, don't pad it. Let's just have a real conversation. Is it money? Is it time? What's the number one big thing you want differently out of your business that you're not getting? Period. Don't give me the, but it's okay because it's not that big a deal. Like, yeah. Yeah. T- talk to me. What's, what's, what's your problem, man? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, and I, and I, that's, it's hard to define for me because I guess that that's, that's my biggest question is what's holding me back. No, I didn't, um, hold on. I didn't ask you what's holding you back. So to see how we changed it. And this is where a coach what's came out. Uh-huh. What, what you, and I was kind of busting your chops of what's your problem, but what's the number one thing your business is not giving you in your life that you want? Not what's holding. So by the way, this mm. is what they all do. They all go to the solution part. What's holding back? How do I fix it? Hold on. Everybody wants to do that. I want to get to solution, 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 but I haven't clearly identified the problem. And then they wonder why they try a bunch of random crap that isn't really, they're still unhappy because they really never got what the problem was. So they solved the problem that wasn't the real problem. I'm just talking about the problem. What's the number one frustration you have right now today with your business? Time, money, growth. Talk to me. Time. It's definitely time. uh, How many hours a week? Is it quality of time or quantity of time? It's the quality of time. Okay. So what you're doing in the business you don't enjoy. So I don't feel that I'm effective with the quality of time that I'm, I, I'm spending a lot of time with my cleaners go showing up after, the, you know, some of their cleanings, um, really reviewing a lot of their work because of the standard that I'm holding with these clients. I have to keep it at that level. So I find myself spending a lot of time doing that. And I don't know, I, I, sometimes I don't feel that I'm effective enough in, in the time that I'm there. Um, to really keep those standards in their head moving forward as they're going through the home. So those are two separate problems. N- neither are wrong, but we want to be clear. One is I'm frustrated with my people doing what I consider to be a half-assed job. The right. other is I don't like how I'm spending my time at work. Which of those is the core problem? The core problem is is the quality with the, with the cleaners. Okay. So the beautiful thing is we could solve a lot of different things, but right now, and if you're just like, my business is stuck, I can't hire, I can't get enough employees, I'm, I'm stunted, we can say all these things. And they're all fine to solve, but we can't solve them all at once. Mm-hmm. If, if the number one thing, and I, we don't have that much time, so I can't dive deeper. If we were one-on-one and we had more time, I would poke you a little more because I don't think that's it. But I'm just going to take you at your word and assume the quality is the problem. That's an easy problem. Uh, or an easier problem than I'm stuck. I can't hire. I the W two. My quality is bad. I don't like how much time I'm working. We're, we can't get enough customers. We're only get. See how we spin and spin and spin. And what happens is we think about a problem like, oh, that seems too hard. So we jump to another, and that seems too hard. So we jump to another, and then we just go round and round, which feels awful. But we never have to really do any work. So yeah. I would pick the one problem, the one. And when I say problem, I mean with your business, I mean with you. So what I hear you saying is, I personally, Tofi, don't like how it makes me feel when my cleaners do the quality of work that they're doing. Okay. Yes. We're just focusing on that. And maybe it only takes a week or two. Like if that's all we're doing, we're not going to talk about W2 or, or 1099. We're not going to talk higher. We're not gonna, and we can make a bunch of excuses. So here's what that could look like. That's ineffective. And then we'll talk about what it should look like. That's effective. And then we'll mm-hmm. call it a day. What that could look like is, well, if I just had W2 employees, then they do a better job. And if I um, hired better people and fired all these people, then I'd have a better job. And if I got better core values, then I'd have a better job. And if I had a hiring manual, then, and we just make up 47 things, guesses. When I look down, I just want you to know I'm I'm writing as you're talking. If don't give you, I'll give you a quick hint. This is being recorded. You could probably listen to it again another time. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so funny. I would say a third of the people take notes, and I want to be like, you know, we're recording this, right? This is 
funny. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate yeah, you. I appreciate your uh, your commitment, but I didn't want you to think I was not paying attention. But go, go ahead. Sorry, I wasn't. I didn't. But uh, I appreciate your your consideration. So, what we really want is what's the quickest way and the most direct way. And I think if and by the way, guys, I know. I feel like sometimes I feel like a big pain in the butt when people are like, just answer my question. And I say, I don't want to answer your question. I want to force you or encourage you to do the hard work of thinking about what we really want, which is frustrating. And again, that's part of the reason people have a coach is coaches can help them get there quicker sometimes yeah. when you're on your own and spin. But the work has to be done. Whether you have a coach, or you have to do it on your own. Even if you're like, oh, I can't do it on my own without a coach. Hire a coach. I can't afford a coach. Well, you pick one. <laughs> the work has to be done. Skipping, it's not going to, you know, so this conversation has to be had period, effectively. If you can do it on your own, God bless. If you need a coach, a spouse, a friend, I don't care, but it has to be done. You don't get to go, well, I don't have anyone to talk to. Okay, well, then you're not me. This is, this is why employees make what they make and owners would make what they make. We have to be identifying and working on the right problem. Okay, so what you're saying is if we go the quickest route to, I feel yucky when we don't do the work that I promised, that's good. That means you're a man of integrity, good indicator, but we can make up a bunch of tangential stuff that touches the problem, but will not fix the problem. So the tangential said, well, maybe they're W2, they're, they're 1099. Maybe if I went W2, I can assure you just going to them, Hey, our legal relationship has gone from this to this, you know, same thing. Like I've got real problems with this dating relationship I'm having, but I think if we get married, then it'll magically fix it. <laughs> Good comparison. Yeah. Hilarious yeah. because everyone knows that's a, that's a fool's errand, but then we try and do it. Or we've got a marriage and it's on the rocks, but if we get, if I knock her up and we get pregnant, that'll fix it. It's like, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little less tight because it's not a legal, it's not a change in your legal relationship. So no, uh, yeah. having a W2 or 1099 is not going to make a big difference. Um, firing all your people and starting and hiring new won't make a big difference if you don't know how you got where you're at. Mm -hmm. So typically, believe it or not, we the next so the next thing people will do is if I just had a good employee operations manual, right? If I just wrote down and had videos at a perfect train, my training's no good, my training, I need better training. It's never the training. Um, 100 percent of the time there's lack of culture and core values. So the example I use periodically is um I would be bottom quarter cleaner, right? If you hired me to clean, I'd be, I'm not good at it. I don't like it. I would be terrible. Yeah. That said, I'll bet you I'd be better than every other cleaner you got. And here's why. My core values are to have fun, make money, be real and help out. So, because that's who I am, I'd come to you and everyone I worked with, both the people, the customers at the job, as well as the people you put me in employees, we'd all have fun because that's who I am. I like busting chops. I like doing whatever. As long as your customers were okay with that and you didn't have employees that were all uptight, I'd be great. Um, I like to help out. So when I see my, my teammates struggling, I'm going to do it. When I see something on the ground, I'm going to pick it up. If I feel like we're doing a bad job, I want to help. I'm real, right? So I, if I, I wouldn't take the job, but if I did take the job and you said, Mike, here's the job, I'm going to pay X amount, but you need to do a good job and this place needs to look nice before you go. Yeah. Because I'm real, I would tell you that. So because we're a core values match, even though I'm the worst cleaner in the world, I would still do a very good job, not having nothing to a skill. You might have, and I'm not saying you do, I don't know any of your employees, but you might have the best cleaner in the world. This guy, gal can out clean anyone in the world. Let's say you do the literal best cleaner, but he's got terrible core values. He's not any fun. So he's, everyone's miserable around him. He doesn't help out. He's like, I did my job, do your job, loser. Um, he doesn't care about making money for you, for the company, for himself. None of that matters. He's just uptight about cleaning. Um, have fun, be real, help out, make money. Uh, and he, yeah, which I forgot. Oh, and he's not real, right? He, he's like, sure, I'll do it your way, boss. And then he's like, I'm smarter. I'm the best cleaner ever. I'm going to do it my way. Yeah. Even though he, he or she's a better cleaner because it's not a core values match, fail. Even though I'm a terrible cleaner because I am a core values match, I'd be a very effective employee. So short answer is, A, I don't want you to leave like, oh, good. I'll just start putting culture and core values into my company. Good, you should. What I really want you to leave with is, I need to get better. The muscle I'd like to see you build, Tofik, is to identify the most important problem and the quickest solution to it without getting off on a bunch of tangents. <laughs> right? You just focus on, I'm going to get clear on my core values. I'm going to start living them out loud. If the people that I have don't match up, then yep. I'm going to let them go. And when I hire new people, I'm going to do it based on core values. That way you're not just replacing. Because again, if you just fired everyone now and hired a new bunch without knowing what, what happened, you'll just hire a new bunch of people that have this. You just have a different, <laughs> different faces and problems. All right. Yeah. yeah. Rant over. Questions, comments, or remarks? You, no, no. Uh, all of that is, no. I mean, culture is, uh, that's something that I struggle with. We don't have an office space. 
And that is like, I think a pivotal, it's going to be a pivotal moment for us is having a, a headquarters, if you will, for the perfect, team. Hold on. Perfect example of exactly what I'm like, don't do this. You made up a bunch of crap that's not true. So first of all, I've done this a couple of times. I promise if having a headquarters was the key, I would have said everything I said. And they go, but before you think of any of this, Tofi, you've got to have a headquarters. If you don't have a building, this is impossible. That's not the case. We have a very powerful culture. You know how many of my employees are in Scottsdale with me or team members? None. You know how many of my customers are at any given time? Almost always zero. There happens to be one in, in the Phoenix area now, but has nothing. I've never met her. She could be in New Zealand. doesn't make any difference. So again, you're making up stories that have nothing to do with it. So I'm telling you, and that's a good thing about coaching is here's exactly what you need to do. And you're like, yeah. that sounds hard. And I'm, I'm going to get to meddling a little bit. You can argue with me if I'm wrong. I'm not good at that. So as opposed mm-hmm. to going, great, Mike, how do I get good at that? Or going and get better at that? You're like, I need an office. Once I get an office, then I can do it. That hasn't, that's, there's, couldn't be further from the truth. But if that's the, the reality you choose to, to inhabit, then that shall be your reality. So I want to encourage you, Cleaning Nation, that's exactly what owners do that struggle is they make up other problems that have nothing to do with that. And they blame it on that because it's easier to go, if I had a space and I could do it, then go, all right, well, I'm 26. I'm not good at building a culture. I guess that's a skill I need to get better if I really want to take it to the next level. And you yeah. might go, I'm not willing to do that. Yeah. Stay where yeah. you're at. It's okay. But we don't want to make, if I just had a W-2, then I'd be it. If I just had a workspace, then I'd be good. If I just could pay more, that would be good. If no one wants to work in my area, I could I could give you a dozen of them because I've heard them all. So yeah. all right, yeah. we've got a wrap. That said, questions, comments, or remarks before we move on? No. Nope. Nope. So if he's like, no, you, every last time I had a question or said something, you yelled at me. I don't want to say it. <laughs> 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 he may be dumb, but he's not stupid. No, um, no. This uh, this is this is a huge learning curve. Um, so no, I mean, I uh, there's a reason I'm on this call. So please, please continue. I love this, all of this. Cool. And I want to encourage you, Cleaning Nation. Um, my wife's an artist, and when it comes to art or cooking, um, guess who's in charge of my house? It would be my bride. She's really smart. You know how coachable I am? Completely, because I know what I don't know, and I have no pride. I'm like, I don't care. I just want to do this thing right. So the attitude that Tofi's got, again, it could be easy for you all to go, well, he's young. Okay. (laughs) That's a story you could tell. Uh, I'm 47 and I'm, um, I like to think I'm pretty smart when it comes to some things. You know, I'm really smart. I asked a bunch of stupid questions from a lot of smart people and I shut up and listen. So, Mm -hmm. uh, and I still ask a bunch of stupid questions for people a lot smarter than me in a lot of different areas. So I want to encourage you guys that attitude of I'm here to learn. I want a different, as soon as you get more committed to a different result than you can get committed to protecting your pride or your ego or your, you know, I want to do it my way. That is when there's results start happening. Keep in mind, it's your business, not just Tofi, but Clean Nation. If you're like, I don't want to do it. I want to do it my way. And I don't care if I grow. Then do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> what am I here to yell at you for? Yeah. But if yeah. and when you want different results, you got to be open to doing different things. All right. Clean Nation, we went. This is like a whirlwind because I feel like I got so much to say and I didn't want to go long. Uh, if you're like, I would like more, that was helpful, but I need more. We've done 700 podcasts. I've written two books. There's a 15,000 uh, member Facebook group. We have a ton of free resources. GrowMyCleaningCompany.com. Check it out now. GrowMyCleaningCompany.com. I will see you there. Well, here we are at the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me. But like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing. Share with a friend. Share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.